jump on in and I know you guys get me a lot. So we'll, we're going to try to get through this. But one of the th conversations that we've been having as we do the site visits is we also take an opportunity to visit your websites and um, to kind of see what that looks like and get to know you a little bit before we meet with you. And that really bring up a conversation among the team that it might be good to hold a session where we talk about what are some key things that you should have on your website. And I know a lot of us have laughed, um, you know, you build your website, right? And then um, lately, it just sort of sits there, you know, you go off and you would be networking and you'd be having meetings and then six months, a year, two years pass and the website's just been sitting there. So this is the time now that we're back in virtual, people will be visiting your website if they haven't. Um, and it's a great time to give it a little bit of a, a, a I won't say spring cleaning because we're in summer, but to freshen it up. And um, so that's what we're going to spend a little bit of time about today. And uh, I'm going to share you just some tips and hold on because I'm going to um, <clears throat> share my whole screen and, and then start the presentation because I got some uh, samples to show you as we go along. And let me close this little window. Okay, everybody can see that, right? <laughs> Okay, great. So one of the things, um, so what we put together today is really the four things your website needs, right? So there's lots and lots of things that you can put on your website, but what we wanted to talk about today are things that we've identified as a team and things that I've been seeing myself in a lot of the courses and things I've been taking um, around marketing that are no matter what, your site needs to have these four things. <laughs> so you can have other stuff, but make sure that you have these four things. And you know, a lot of times that you're gonna ask this question, like, like, did you know that you really only need four things to make your website stand out? You don't need this massive website with lots and lots and lots of arms. And we used to laugh about, um, you know, talk about you build the website and then maybe you would grow and you'd add a page and then you'd grow and you'd add another page and then something would change and you'd add another page. And uh, one of the organizations I worked with uh, about 15 years ago, we laughed that all of a sudden our website, number one, looked like 42nd Street because everything was popping and glowing and we had added all this new animation and stuff that happens. And then it had also just turned into this monster on the back end when you looked at it and trying to find for example, where something was, if somebody said, oh, that's a wrong phone number, um, was just crazy. So simplicity is really the key nowadays and keeping your website where people can very quickly get to what they need. And so here are the four things that you need to have on your website. And we're gonna go through each of these. The first is a landing page. The second, people need to know who you are. People need to know what you do people need to know how to contact you. Now again, this may seem very simple and you're only going to have more questions, but hang in there. We're going to go through all of these. So why do you only need these four things? And again, this is just the basics. If you're going to put up a website, say you just started your business or you're building a new website, if, as long as you have these four things, you should be able to hit go and be able to run your business. And the reason is, is simple truly is better. We have really gone back from the age of when we were building websites. And again, you'd click and you'd have like this monster long, um, you know, menu and things. We're really getting away from that because we want things that are easy to navigate, that helps people get their questions answered. And the main thing is people want to know, like, and trust you. So they want to be able to find everything they need quite quickly and they don't get frustrated and they get to know you and then they feel that level of trust. So that's really the main thing, reason we talk about these things. So let's dig in and some people will ask because, you know, some of the terminology keeps changing. Many of you may know this, but now we talk about this idea of, do you have a landing page? What's your landing page? Like you may even hear people say, I don't, you know, not your website, but where's your sales page? Where's your landing page, right? It's, it's very common vernacular now. And so what this is, is it's where people land um, when they put in your address. And so it, it is your homepage, for lack of a better word. Um, but again, it's just sort of the new speak and how we're talking about it because it has some different components than they used to have in the old traditional homepage. This is also kind of like the front door of your business. Think about it. If you have a physical space, right? People see the front of your space, right? They drive up, they park the car, and they see your business, and they see your front door. It's also like 
the your welcome sign or your welcome mat. And it's going to be for most people your first impression, especially now in the time of COVID, um, because you may not be getting out to those events. And so this may be the first thing people are seeing about you is this landing page. So those are just some things to keep in mind. Oops, I think I, I clicked off of it. Oh, okay, here we go. So what are things to include on your landing page? And again, this is the page that people are going to land on um, when they put in your um, address. And again, these are just five sections that we're seeing the most common. And in my experience, when I work with business owners to build their websites, this is really, um, you know, the top things you need to get going. And it doesn't really matter. You can put these in a different order. This is just the most common. So the very first thing that we see on top of all pages is a picture, and that is called your hero image. And it's usually an image that's going to define your business. So for example, with us, you're going to go to WeBank, uh, WeBank Florida, and you'll see pictures of women <laughs> and successful women, um, hopefully people that you identify with, right? Um, and it also, in this hero image, is going to be a link to sign up for something. It might be your newsletter. It might be an email. This is something that you can regularly change, just depending on what you're doing. So for example, um, say you are offering a special or a product, you can change that link, but it's to get them to do an action. The other thing then is an overview just of your business. But again, this is simple. This isn't the whole history of your business. This is literally what we do. Here you go, boop, 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 boop. This is what we do, this is what we offer. Then you're gonna go into a key areas of your service or your products. And the best way to do this is really in columns with icons or images so that people have just a little description. So like I said, I have some, a lot of uh, some friends that have roofers, construction, um, various different businesses up in here, up in this area that are getting ready for hurricane season. And so they may have on their site, we have an evaluation is one thing that we might do. We come out and test your, your roof. Um, so they might have three or four things that they do besides just putting on a new roof, right? And so you're gonna wanna put those into buckets. Um, for example, here at Weback Florida, we do certification, we do events. And so when you go on our page, you're going to see three buckets of things or four buckets, depending on what it is. Um, and you can get right to it. It's really simple. Um, and then depending on your business, you would typically have a section that you would put testimonials. And if you don't have testimonials, like say your new business, this is a great place to start your blog and to put blog articles and things like that because you're trying to showcase, if you don't have testimonials yet, you can showcase your knowledge and your expertise through blogs. And then the final thing on your page is literally just a contact us form. And so I'm gonna jump over and let you guys um, see, hopefully, <laughs> A couple of examples and I'm going to start with WeBank and again I want you to see this right so here at the top I think everybody can see that um, here at the top is the hero with a button to do something um, then they go into you know what they offer and again this part can be a little bit different but I want you to see something they have one two three four five sections. You see that? So they've got five sections. Um, and again, it goes back to that idea. And then at the bottom, right, here's the thing about, I mean, this is the footer, but here's how you can engage with us, how you can contact us, different stuff. But there are five sections on their landing page. Another one that I had to show that I think people will laugh. This is a little bit of a different example, but I just thought this was hysterical when I um, checked their website and hopefully it's gonna load, it's the Disney site. Um, but everybody, if you haven't been on Disney, you will find this so fascinating. Oh no, it may not load. But actually the hero image is loading. So they've got the same thing. One, <laughs> two, um, this is a, another one here, three, four, five. I thought that was so fascinating. I had to show you guys. So again, they have five sections. It's a little bit busier, obviously, because they got a lot more going on. Um, but again, they have five main sections on their site. Um, and then of course, you know, you come to our page and it's the same. One, two, three, four, five. We've got six right now because if you count the COVID um, that we've added for temporary, but typically it's five. So that just gives you a little bit of an example on, um, 
what this looks like. And uh, these will be in the presentation if you wanna um, keep going. Okay, so um, the second thing then is putting in there about who you are. Now that was the longest thing is about the landing page. This was something that we didn't see actually everybody that we've been working with lately have on their page. And this is so critical, guys. A lot of people will say, well, why do I need an about me? Why do I need this? This is your about me page or the meet me page. Um, again, this gets back to this idea that people will only buy from someone they like, know, and trust. And the best way to do that is uh, to have a page where they can find out about you. Um, and then you are your business. Don't make this just about your company. Also talk about your company, but make sure people know, um, you know, some more things about you. And we're going to go into that a little bit. Oh, sorry, guys, I'm clicking a little fast. <laughs> um, and so what to include in your about page. It's going to be very similar in essence of having some sections, but obviously the sections are a little bit different. So here again, you're gonna have an, a hero image with a call to action. The reason you want this on an each page is that it attracts the eye, don't just go straight for verbiage, and then it's gonna make them potentially do something. On your about you page, it could be, you know, get my newsletter, um, you know, get this free book, whatever, right? But again, it's a, it's a call to action. Um, then you wanna make sure you go into who you are. Make sure you put a picture, people want to see you, and list a few facts. This is not your, your bio. This isn't everything you've ever done, every accomplishment. You can list some awards if it's applicable, especially to your business, certifications if it's applicable to your business, but don't go overboard because think of this as just meeting somebody and you're going to give them a little bit of information about you just enough for them to go wow but don't overwhelm them whereas we all know how many times we've been sitting at something and people go on and on and on and you're like okay we got it they sit on 20 boards and they have won every award after a while it gets to be a little much so you just want to list the ones and especially the things that support your business why you do what you do. We talk a lot about this, Simon Sinek in the book, your why. This is really important, but this isn't just your why. This is why you started this business, what it is about this, because then you get into what it means for you them, for your audience, right? So for example, you know, here at WeBank, um, WeBank Florida, we exist because we wanna help you utilize and grow your business through certification, utilizing the certification process, right? We have a real why we are in business and what that means for you. Um, you can also put a quote and some photos, but again, at the end, this gets back to making sure there's always a contact us or a contact me form. So every bottom, you're gonna have a call to action with an image and every, every top you're gonna to have that and every bottom you're gonna have a contact um, form. So it keeps it consistent. And what you're doing here is you are training the eye to know, oh, no matter what page I go to, there's something I can get at the top and there's a way for me to get to them at the bottom. Um, I'm gonna show you this really great example. This is actually a, a coach that Nancy and I just, um, adore and we do a lot of work with. So Janine Blackwell, and if you've never checked out um, her work, so if you go in here, you'll see her about, and she's got a couple of drop down things, but you'll see this one's a little bit different. Um, she's just got a little bit more graphics here, right? So she's put a little bit about where she's gone and, um, you know, pictures of herself and she's done it in a letter format. But again, you can see in here, right, um, a message from me to you, you can do this. Um, and then she gets into what she does is she teaches people how to create six figure courses. At the top, she's got your call to action, get this book. Um, and then at the bottom, right, she's got her quote and then, you know, sign up for my email, get in contact with me, right? So you'll see that this is um, very much what we're talking about in that about page. Okay, we're going to jump back and uh, keep going here. Um, so then you wanna make sure that you have a section about what you do. 
And this is because people clearly want to know how they can work with you and what you do. You want to make this very clear. I don't know how many times, right, we've either been in conversation with somebody or maybe you even have gone to a website. You're like, I still don't know what they do. <laughs> um, so you need this to be very clear. And people want to clearly understand how what you do will impact them. So you want to tell them and then tell them what it's going to do for them. And so again, you, what is it? The top is your hero with your call to action. Could be something free. Then you're gonna to wanna to bucket your services and your products. So literally, like we talked about on the landing page, put very quick buckets so that it's repeating. It should be similar to what they saw on the front. Um, for example, I just bought with a client and on the front, she wanted people to know that there were these three ways and she didn't list one-to-one -one coaching, but on the uh, work with me page, we listed one-to-one -one coaching. So you wanna keep it very, very simple. And then again, uh, use images and icons. The cleaner this looks, the better. Don't put too much because you want them to reach out for you. You want to really think of this as this is their taste, right? This is their sampler that they go, oh, that's interesting. I'd love to know more about that. Or that, that sounds like exactly what I want to need. And then you're going to drive them to your contact us form. And so again, I'm going to go back over to Janine's and I know I'm jumping around because uh, she's just got a really simple um, work with me and she calls it work with me. Now she doesn't have a call to action here, but um, again, I recommend that's a great thing to do. And you'll see here, she's got it literally in buckets, work with us to grow your business. And then she's got where her team can actually build things for you. So here are the three ways that you can work with her. The fourth thing you can do is actually have her team work with you right so again very very simple that's all there is to it and so you'll see that is the theme of the day is uh keep it keep it simple um and so the last thing we're going to talk about is the contact page and you've already seen this right because this is not just a page this needs to be on every page you don't want to make them hunt for it and you want it to be simple and um really the best thing to do is to have it at the bottom of every single page and you if you haven't seen that yet you will um, uh, going forward so here's some other questions can i just put this all on the landing page <laughs> and if that's something you want to do absolutely you can do that um, but here's some things i want you to think about do you yourself like long, long pages? And what I mean by is that sometimes you go to pages and you can scroll and scroll and scroll and you're like, but how much is it? Or how do I join? And you can't find and you scroll and you scroll and you scroll and it just takes forever. That is common. You're going to see that a lot. Those are typically more of a sales page and not your landing page, right? So again, we're talking about your your actual, what you're using as your website. When you see those pages and you scroll and it says sign up now and you scroll some more, it says sign up now and you scroll some more and you sign up now, those are what people are using to actually sell a product. That's different than a landing page. But you can have something that has all this on there. My recommendation would be that you have your designer, whoever you're working with or yourself, put that you can jump to the certain sections of the page if you get too long, longer than five sections. Um, and, um, and also think about your audience, you know, depending on what you're selling, you want to make sure that they are just as interested and they can find what they need um, and that this is something that's going to appeal to them. Um, so here's some other questions. So what about if I need a store or a client page or speaking? Um, don't I just need more? <laughs> and my challenge to you is more, is it more better or is it just more? And um, again, you need to think about your business. So if you have a business and it's all around a shop, then obviously you need the shop link on there. Um, but you don't necessarily have to have just more. I was um, working with a client the other day and she was like, well, don't I need to put links to everything on the main page? No, because you wanted to drive them simply to your how to work with me page and then they're going to find it all there. The thing is, is about less pages, keeping the content, content nice and compact 
easy to find, give them just enough information that they understand what you're doing and how it will impact them, and then reach them, have them reach out and connect with you. So again, if you need these things like a store, and when I talk about a client page, some places like to put here for my clients or here's a list of logos. Um, maybe you have speaking, um, like for me, I do have a speaking page because um, it's a whole separate entity of my business. However, you can get to it from my front pages. So, um, but don't just put more. Literally, you need those four things and you can get going. Um, and then as your business grows, you can look at how these things intertwine and fit. But really, speaking should be um, connected to your how to work with me page. And um, you can put at the bottom of that um, uh, the, the about our company page, some of the logos, if you're, you're allowed to do so working with. So again, um, don't think that you need a lot, a lot of clicks. You don't want people hunting and pecking around your site. So I want you to think of this. Consider the fact that if you go into a grocery store or go into any store, right? And I've got the, the shopping cart here. So I go into my local store and I am ready to go. Now, when I go into a store, there are aisles and aisles and aisles and I can get completely overwhelmed because say I'm looking for a tin of tomato soup. I just want to go get a can of tomato soup. Well, if those things aren't labeled, then I'm going to hunt all over the place to try to find the tomato soup. So the idea about this is that when people come to your website, they may be ready to work with you. They are shopping for something, whether it be you're the one they're gonna select or not, they're shopping. And so you've got them down your aisle. You wanna make it very clear and very easy to know what's on your aisle. Hello, you've reached Stephanie, I am this, and this is what you're gonna find down my aisle. <laughs> And it's not just going to say food down this aisle. It's going to say specifically what's down this aisle and help them navigate that the first thing you're going to find is pasta, then you're going to find soup, and then you're going to find, then you're going to find, right? So again, think of it that way. They are ready to shop. They are shopping usually. That's why they're clicking. They're doing searches. So they've come to you with an empty cart and they're ready to fill it. And if you don't tell them what you offer and what you have to think they may want to, and why they want to put it in their cart, they're going to leave with an empty cart. <laughs> I just think that's a great way to think about this. Um, so here we go to recap. There's four key things, a landing page, a who you are page, a what you do, and how to contact you. Those are the main areas that you need on every website on your website. <laughs> Excuse me. So I ask you, are you ready to grow? Because I tell you right now, you get this cleaned up and you get it simplified, or maybe you haven't even launched and you're ready to launch your business. Get those few things built and ready and you're going to be ready to grow your business. So I'm going to um, go ahead and um, here's my contact details, but I'm going to shift and see if we have any questions. And um, see here, I'm, I'm trying to navigate. <laughs> too many things at once. Um, and so I don't know if there's any questions about um, uh, this is a great way to start. Um, Steph, so the, the five, that fascinated me, the five different uh, pieces of each page. So it would be each of those four sections would have like five sections on each page or each mm -hmm. uh, would have five sections on it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very common. And it, it's like I said, it was just, it's just funny that when you, when I went and looked even at Disney, that they still follow that same model. And a lot of that is, it's like anything else. Like when there used to be, when you would do a PowerPoint presentation, if you had too many points, you made a second slide. It's kind of that same idea that if there's too much, you're going to have another page, you're going to have them go. And you want to again, make it very Quick. Now you'll see, and it's and it's different for Disney. It's all images, right? They use all images. Um, some people will use icons. Some people will use words. But it, I have been fascinated about one, two, three, four, five. So many websites you're going to go to, you're going to notice it now. <laughs> they've got the hero image, and then they've got the four buckets of things for you to do from that main page. Steph, are you finding that more people are trying to handle this themselves? Um, or, uh, or do they keep this in mind when they go to their web developer 
and say, you know, um, because I, I guess I've done a lot of websites where I've had to kind of sketch out what I want and then I hand it over to somebody. So it would be really helpful for you to kind of have all that together in a list or something and be yeah. able to get over to the developer. Yeah. Yeah. What you're going to find if you go work with somebody, uh, most of the ones that you work with, and it's been my case, whether I work with a developer or even in my own business, you're going to get templates. They're going to give you an outline of how they build a website. And so often it's going to be like this, like, what do you want the hero image? So they're going to give you a general template and then you're going to be able to edit it. That's very common. What sometimes they'll do is a discovery meeting with you and they're going to ask a lot of questions. They may even have a questionnaire to fill out and it's going to even ask like colors, examples. They're going to want you to send your favorite websites. Um, um, and so a lot of that, and I would say the same thing, if you are, I, we do see a lot of people, especially um, smaller business owners, maybe solopreneurs trying to do this for themselves. I think it's like anything else. If you need to go out and take courses and learn and you're not really enjoying it, you may want to look at that because um, you can actually find people to get you going for like a thousand dollars. And you have to think of your time. Um, if you need a very extensive website with a big fancy shop, you know, you might have a bigger $3,000 investment. Um, but, um, you know, some people uh, are great. And then what you're going to find like WordPress and the site we use, they all have templates. You just pick the template <laughs> and you put your colors in. Um, and most of them, it, you will laugh, but once you buy it, the template's going to have those four or five sections and then you can move them around depending on what, what you want and how you like. Um, but the best thing I always tell people to start is to go look at other sites. I, I used Pinterest when I built mine. I always tell my clients, um, look on Pinterest color board, stuff like that. Uh, Steph, thank you for that beautiful presentation. I love the slides. I love everything you put in there. And I want you to know you have a question. Someone is asking if I add a blog, how often should it be changed? Once a week, once a week, once a month or what, what time frame? Oh, awesome. That is actually a great question. I was just talking to a new client about last week about that. And I really would say it depends on your business. Um, and what I mean by that is if you have, um, like I said, like the roofing business, right? They're not going to have information necessarily. Probably what they might not have something every week that has to do with your roof and care and stuff, right? They may have something um, every other week or once a month, depending on that. So I think you need to look at your business. If you're a coach, you need lots of content and you should be doing a blog at least once a week if you're a coach um, because um, that is really showcasing your talent and your expertise. And it's really critical to make sure that you're going out there. I work with, um, uh, I don't know if April's on today, but we've got a new potential um, business owner coming on to get certified and she has a health coaching business and she sends something out every Monday. And it's all the steps of things to keep in mind of your health for that week. And it really showcases her expertise and what services she offers. So, you know, again, I would look at your business and what makes sense. And um, what's great is most systems um, can automatically add that in. And it's, it's great. Again, if you don't have testimonials, maybe you haven't even gathered them before, a blog works just as well. Hmm. Right. Are there certain platforms you can recommend, like you're mentioning WordPress and stuff like that for do-it-yourselfers versus having someone do it? What are some of the, I don't know, is there? Yeah. <laughs> There are so many. I have to admit, I um, have a few favorites that I've worked with, and it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. I think what you have to look at again is what's the key. And if you are just needing a website to get basic information out, like I showed you, here's the, you know, my four different areas, here's the things that I offer, and you don't need it to work hard for you to be a really workhorse. So what I mean by that is like, you, Emily, probably need to sell. You need a store. That's a workhorse website, right? They need some more power behind it. And you're going to want to find a system that specifically caters to a storefront on a site. If you run a membership, like we do, you want a platform that specifically caters. And the reason I say that is that um, we were there ourselves here at We Back Florida. We were trying to make our WordPress site work for us, but it was a bit cumbersome for us and the members. And so moving to a platform that specifically is for membership makes a huge difference for us and for you. 
Um, same thing if your store. So what I would say is determine what the key goal of the site is. If it's just informational, use a WordPress. I know Diane, you've got some others you've used that are really great and cost effective. Um, use those. But if you need it to do more, then you want to maybe specifically invest in a system that is specific to running stores, that's specific to doing, um, there's even sites now in this virtual conferences, maybe you're a speaker and you're now going to just do virtual conferences. You can get a system that is set up just to help you host virtual conferences and it has a website built in. Yeah, I, I used uh, Wix at one point because it's easy to do, but you have to keep in mind that once you build it on something like that, you are locked in, you know, pretty much forever. Uh, you have to pay the monthly fees or the annual fees or whatever, um, because otherwise you don't have a site. So, um, whereas if you go with a designer, they can design the site and, and host it wherever you want, and then you kind of take it with you wherever you go. So. You know, these are just things you learn along the way. I, that is a great one. And it definitely, I think, is something um, that, yeah, if you go with one of these um, ones that is specific, like a storefront or like we do membership, yeah, you have to rebuild <laughs> when you move. That's yeah. why it's a big decision. I just, I want, I'm so glad that, Steph, that you um, brought up the piece about the kind of about us. Um, so many times we're doing site visits and we, we like to look at your websites before we go in. To, to see you and and you know try to figure out who what you're all about and there's nothing on there the about us might have a paragraph that just says um, we sell uh, parts and you know that's it and you're like well who is behind this I mean, what's the story about the family who started this back in 1857 or you know what is this um, all about and who's this woman business owner? And so I think people are kind of shy about putting themselves out there. But yeah. again, if people are gonna do business with someone they know, like, and trust, it's gotta be, you have to have something on the site that says something about personality of your business. You know? And you know what, Diane? Like, that's the first thing I click when I go to someone's site is about me. I wanna know who they are first and foremost before even looking at anything else. You and do. also like, is this their picture or is it some generic picture of some stock image of somebody that's not them that is like i think is not a, does not serve them well at all they really should showcase themselves it's the trust factor right yeah yeah, yeah. The other thing I'll add just, um, and I know we're, we're going over, but I just want to make sure everybody understands is that it's all about stories. And I'm going to tell you right now, having worked at Walmart in supplier diversity and everything else, they are going to want to know Walmart, Disney, everybody wants to know your story about your business because they want to tell that story. They love to say, we picked so-and-so because it was a fourth generation or it was a first generation, or it was, I made this in the front room of my home. <laughs> the story is so important nowadays more than ever. It's not like in the past where it all had to be so corporate looking. It truly is individual and personal. And so that's another thing is that don't be afraid. You put those stories out there. You be proud of them, whatever they are. And um, because uh, they're going to want to tell those stories. So it's not just important to us and, or an individual consumer, but those big corporates want to see it too. <laughs> that should be another topic. How to tell your story better. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. We, uh, I don't even know where my storyteller guy coaches, but um, yeah, we'll have to do that. Thank you so much again, everybody. We're so excited to have you here. Thank you so much to the team. It's always great to see your faces and stay tuned. You're going to get a chance to see all of us hopefully soon in some of these meetups. So have a great week guys. Bye everybody. Bye. Thank you so much.